Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC India welcomes all the participants for today's Regional Distance Learning Seminar Series. Today's topic is care of CLHIV post-ART initiation, and the speaker is Dr. Arif Vora. Dr. Arif Vora is working as Assistant Professor with the Department of Pediatrics at BJ Medical College and Civil Hospital, Ahmedabad. His special interest is in childhood growth and development, nutrition, and neonatology. He is a master trainer and national faculty for Kangaru Mother Care and trainer for basic and advanced NRP, pediatrics advanced life support, COVID management in neonates and children, FBNC, FIMNCI and various other training programs. We welcome you sir for today's session and request you to start the session. Uh, thank you uh, Shweta for the introduction and I am thankful to the, uh, uh, the ITEC program uh, to invite me for this uh, uh, distant learning seminar uh, series. So today, uh, can we start? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm, uh, am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so it is a topic: the care of CLHIV after the post uh, uh, post aortic initiations, right? So, uh, like. We diagnose the child, we put on the ART, then what to do after the starting the ART, it's very important. Like we, uh, we think that once we have started the ART that our 50% or almost 80% uh, work has been done, it is not so. So even after the starting of ART, the monitoring of the child is very important. So in this session, what we are going to uh, learn, what are the components and objectives of post ART care? Monitoring after the ART initiation in the CLHIV child, adverse effects in its management and drug substitutions. So, uh, what are the objectives of uh, uh, post ART care? To ensure the safety of child uh, who is on ART. So, first of all, once we started the ART, we have to ensure that on this ART or this regime, child should health safety and overall safety of the child should be uh, very much important. We need to optimize the benefits of ART. Like we also have to be like we have to provide them a proper dosage. At the same time, we have to see for the side effects also. To see the response to that particular regime or the drugs we are using for treatment of HIV, that, that to monitor the response to ART. And our aim is to identify the early detection of the treatment failure and comorbidities and uh, co-infections. So, uh, if anyone has any doubt or any query, you can write it down in the chat box or uh, like you can ask later on. It is better if you can ask in between, you can write, write down in the chat box so we can discuss uh, uh, with the, uh, that particular topic when I'm presenting. So, now what happens to CLHIV in the first six months of therapy? So once we start ART, because of the effect of multiplication goes down and then ultimately lead to the number of copies of the virus is reduced. That leads to improvement in CD4 count and that improvement in CD4 count is linked with the clinical immunological improvement in the child. Once the child has achieved the clinical immunological improvement that enhances the ability of child to work, that increases the overall quality of the life, at the same time decreases the morbidity and mortality that related to uh, disease. At the same time, when we are suppressing the viruses, when the CD4 count is rising, that means the immunity is now in a recovery phase. So whatever the infection child may be harboring in the body, they may not be able to present because of the immunity is weak. So once the which may be in our body, which may be in, in inactive stage, and because of the strong immunity, that uh, because of the strong immunity, our immune system fight about that particular infection and that opportunity infection which is dormant till now, which may appear once we start the ART. And, and it is called as what we call as immune reconstruction, uh, reconstruction inflammatory syndrome. So it is because of uh, our immune response which has been developed against that particular uh, viruses or bacteria which was there in dormant stage and that disease will be what we call as immune reconstruction inflammatory syndrome. So child might develop iris also. And there may be in like certain drugs will have side effects in starting off within a few days or weeks like drug sensitivity which may be appear even 
the AIT. So at the same time, the viruses are goes down, our immunity is improving, child quality of life is improved. But at the same time, because of the immunity is improving, some opportunity infection may appear and iris may uh, develop. So what do we do when the patient comes to us once we have started the uh, antiretroviral therapy? So uh, this is the, like you can, whatever objectives when we are monitoring, first is response to therapy. So how we can assess response to that ART therapy? So improvement in anthropometric parameter by gaining the height, the gaining the weight, and decrease down like a uh, like change in a T staging. So T staging is a WHO clinical staging of the child, what we do based on the clinical signs and symptoms. So WHO is divided from stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. Suppose the child is like going from one stage to another stage, like stage four to stage three or stage three to stage two, that child is improving and responding to therapy. Or if the child was previously on stage two, now it's going to stage three or stage four, then the child will not be responding to the therapy. So every time or every visit, what we have to do is we have to, we have to take the anthropometric parameters as well as we have to do the WHO staging. Second, what we have to do is the drug adherence. So we had prescribed the drug to the child and the parents and during the counseling or during the like uh, conversation with the child, we also need to check for the adherence uh, of the drug adherence. Uh, third is the rise in CD4 count and fall in the uh, viral load. So later on, we'll discuss uh, how often we'll monitor the CD4 count and viral load in the next subsequent slides. But for uh, to see the response to therapy, what we have to do is the anthropometric parameter, drug adherence and CD4 count and the viral load. Always look for iris, immune deconstruction inflammatory syndrome. So some of the opportunity infection may appear while during the, uh, uh, while, uh, while uh, uh, like taking the ART drugs. So always ask the child, do you feel something different? Or ask the parents, do you feel something different? Is any new events which may occur during this uh, 10 days, 15 days or one month or six months, you always ask them. And always try to screen for tuberculosis. So tuberculosis is a, uh, many a times uh, tuberculosis coexists with HIV infection or because of strong immunity, the tuberculosis may reappear. The symptoms of tuberculosis may appear after the starting of the uh, ART. So always screen the child for the tuberculosis. There is four screening that includes fever, cough, cold, weight loss or not gaining weight and lymphadenopathy. and cold for more than 15 days, not gaining weight or a weight loss or lymphadenopathy. So always look this four symptoms when you are screening for tuberculosis. Always look for adverse drug reactions like it may be a rash, jaundice, vomiting, oliguria or edema. And many a time because of uh, drugs, what we are initiating in, in AIT, because of the drugs, the some of the laboratory, uh, laboratory uh, parameters might be altered in form of like CBC or LFT or RFT. So that we have to do the lab monitoring for the uh, drug toxicity. And also look for the treatment failure. So how do we identify the treatment failure? Worsening of the symptoms, rising in viral, child. We have to remember this, we are going to assess for response for therapy. We are going to look for infections, ADR and the treatment uh, failure. Now, uh, what happens if the child is responding to that ART or the child is taking that ART regularly on time? I'm sorry for the interruption. Participants are requested to kindly bear with us. Uh, so uh, I would suggest you. Uh, so I would suggest you will have to keep your video uh, off because maybe uh, the internet connectivity is an issue there. I think I changed with the, some other uh, mode of internet. Okay. Uh, okay, sir. Okay.
that change so I so what happened after with, uh, once we start the ART uh, that the viral load decreases the CD4 count improves and the the immunity starts to recover when if the child is not adherent Arisa, I can share the PPT from my end. Is that okay? Oh, Arisa, I can share the PPT from my end. Is that okay? Shweta, can you see my screen? Screen is visible, sir. Please switch to full screen mode. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, what parameters? What we need to monitor uh, while uh, once we have started the ART? So, as I discussed earlier, the clinical parameters. So, always ask the child, like, whatever your overall well-being is, any new symptoms or any any new thing has been developed in the. Uh, uh, during this last few days, don't ask like, do you develop fever? Do you don't have, do you develop cough or cold? You always ask the uh, child or a parent that did you feel anything different since last 15 days or one month or six months or any new event has been occurred? Then child himself or herself will uh, tell you or the parents will tell you. Then always screen for tuberculosis. Check for treatment adherence. You can always do a pill count or any other things uh, for checking for the treatment adherence. Look for any drug adverse drug reactions. And laboratory monitoring, uh, like AR related toxicities, we need to check. Uh, we need to check for the intercurrent illnesses, the drug drug reactions, and other other metabolic abnormalities. And also, we have to do a viral load testing in the CD4 uh, count. Now, which are the par uh, parameters we need to monitor? So, growth and nutrition every visit we need to monitor. The developmental progress in every visit we need to monitor. We need to screen for tuberculosis in every visit. We need to monitor for OIs and uh, T staging, WHO T staging in every visit. We have to look for treatment adherence in every visit and uh, calculate the ARB dose as per the weight. I highlighted the two uh, things. One is the developmental progress and calculate the ARB dose as per the weight. Many a times, most of, most of the time, you usually forget to do these two things. So developmental assessment is very much important because like uh, even not achieving that particular milestone or the child is not uh, like achieving a other further development milestone might tell you even in advance that child may go for a treatment failure or child is not adherent to that particular treatment or a disease is uh, uh, progressing. Second, what happens? The child is like uh, we come across to from 3 kg to 60 kg right uh, in the pediatric uh, population so every visit our weight will be changed and if the weight if the weight change then we have to adjust the dose for that particular weight so that child have optimal response so always look for a weight and always cross check with the dosage chart that the child is getting uh, this uh, uh, according to the weight when child is getting the adequate dosage or uh, not so we have to record the weight at every visit, we have to record the length every three monthly and weight and length. This needs to be plotted on WHO growth chart that, uh, that I'm going to show you in the next slides. Uh, and always look for uh, what uh, there are the three different types of uh, three different type, uh, types of the WHO growth charts. One is for weight for age, another is for length for age and another is the weight for length. In all of three, you can clap, uh, you, can, uh, you can keep it with the white card. I think so. Most of the ART center has been requested to keep this blue chart uh, along with that white card so that you can plot that weight and length chart into that uh, particularly uh, blue chart. 
always identify identify in case of filtering this uh, like ch child may have worsening of signs and symptoms always look for any nutritional deficiency like many vitamins and minerals might affect the immunity of child and that may be a uh, like uh, because of nutritional deficiency child may not be recovering uh, properly so always look for any nutritional deficiency if it is found to be any child is any nutrient deficient then you need to treat for that particular nutrient then check for chronic infections like respiratory gi uri, urinary tract infection and uh, tuberculosis so this on the screen you can look uh, you can say that this is the weight for age a who growth chart it is in blue color the blue color is for boys and pink color is for the girls so here we have a uh, y axis where the weight has been plotted and in the x axis where the age of a child has been uh, showing so here you have a different lines middle one is the green line which suggests the ideal weight of a child for that particular age any child which goes below minus 2 sd suggests this child is having malnutrition in any child who goes above the 2 it suggests the child is having overweight and the obesity so child weight should fall between these two red lines so when you are plotting the weight for the age it should be plot uh, the, the it should come between this two red line this first thing you need to remember second when you are assessing the growth over a next few visits let's say after 15 days or one month or six months the line should goes or should goes along with the green line so line should go along with the green line or it should ascend in a parallel to that green line it suggests a child is gaining the optimal weight or for that particular age if the child uh, the child's line is goes either it if it get flattened or it it uh, it crosses the red line and goes below the red line the child is having child is not gaining weight adequately but you don't have to wait till it goes below the red line if the child is between this two red line any flattening or a not gaining weight should be alarming and you should thoroughly investigate that child for particularly for uh, like it may be a, a non adherence or it may be a treatment failure or it may be something else in because of which the child is not gaining weight so always uh, take an opinion from a pediatrician so growth assessment is very much important particularly for the weight for the age and this can tell you so many things so you have to always plot a weight for age so here this a uh, pink chart is for the girls and the blue chart is for the uh, boys so here you can see that this line goes uh, parallel to the green line and child is growing well curve flattening suggests urgent assessment and it needs to be seen by a pediatrician and a line goes below the red line suggests the child is losing the weight and we need to assess this child Uh, immediately now this is the chart that we, what we use for the developmental assessment of a child so this is the uh, uh, denvo chart uh, that uh, what we are using is like here in in the bottom you can see the age in months and a block which represent a normal age for development of that particular uh, particular uh, developmental milestone so here i can say that a social smile is the uh, milestone in each and every child should have achieved by the age of between 3 to 4 months if any child is not achieving uh, a social smile after the 4 months of age it suggests a developmental delay let's say uh, i am taking the child is transferring the objects hand to hand so this milestone usually appear after the 5 month of age and most of the child they achieve this milestone between the 9 months of uh, 5 to 9 months baby so after the 9 months if the child is not achieving the transfer the objects from one hand to another hand which will tell you this child is having a developmental delay so i am giving you an example that a child is of a 5 month old a child has come to you for developmental assessment so i had a draw a line at the 5 months so anything which is left side of this line this should child should achieve like child should have achieved social smile there has to be a child is following the pen or pencil and child should have achieved the head holding anything which is on the uh, like the block which comes on the uh, red line like uh, rolls from back to stomach if the child has achieved it's okay if the child has not achieved this 
then it will tell you okay it, it you have to wait till uh, uh, 11 months so it may or may not be achieved so you'll not label here for developmental delay even turns head to the uh, that sound or bell if it is achieved it's well and good if it's not achieved it, we have to wait for another two months okay so similarly for eight months the child should have achieved the social smile and head control if the child has not achieved this milestone for eight months it suggests a developmental delay if the child has not achieved a turns head to the sound even it suggests a developmental delay if the child has not achieved uh, like uh, turning from back to front or uh, prone to supine, then we can wait till 12 months. So this is how you can do a quick developmental assessment while you are assessing the uh, child. So uh, abnormal development always a uh, raises of concerns of uh, HIV encephalopathy. So and it may be an earliest feature of HIV and encephalopathy because it is a slow growing virus and viruses may reside in the brain and which will, might have a uh, developmental uh, delay. And when you are doing a developmental assessment, you always look for gross motor, fine motor, language and social skills. Now, what are the uh, red flags of the development? These are the general I had given here that if the any child does not place any object in the hand by the five months, it suggests a child is having developmental delay, not reaching the objects by the six months, not sitting with the support uh, without support by the 12 months, not walking by 18 months, and not running by the two and a half years. These are the general red flags for the gross motor and the fine motor milestone. And this child needs to be assessed for developmental delay, and it should be referred for pediatrician for assessing the for detailed assessment of that particular. Child. When you are doing head to toe examination of the child, you have to also look for any nutritional uh, deficiency like uh, lethargy. Here in the picture, in the first picture, you can see that it's a malnourished child uh, where you can see it's a generalized vesting, uh, which has been seen in the first two photographs. You can see the oral thrush, even the edema. The edema is also just a nutritional deficiency in the kwashiorkor. core, it's a disquashure core. So always look for in general resting or edema. You also look for other like uh, difficulty in swallowing, fever, anemia, or it may be signs of pallor or uh, vit vitamin A deficiency, with hot spots or angular chiliosis or glossitis. Then this will tell you that this child might have some nutritional deficiency and needs to be treated. Child needs to be also evaluated for rickets it's very common. So always look for vitamin deficiencies. And if it is found to be a vitamin deficit, then you need to supplement the child with vitamin uh, uh, D. So like, uh, then we come to the clinical assessment. We're asking some symptoms to the child. So as I said earlier, you always ask parents, hey, is there any new events or any, anything different you feel in last uh, few months or in few days? Ask the child to tell or parents to tell first. And then if you found, like, if you want to add some particular signs about some particular signs and symptoms, you may ask other children about the particular signs and uh, symptoms. Now. now, what are the warning signs like a weight loss, sudden onset of fatigue or a loss of appetite, repeated episodes of vomiting, diarrhea, repeated episodes of fever, recurrent adherence issues, the presence of new neurological signs, jaundice, or a burgeoning of already neurological signs. Now, these are the signs Either it will tell you this child is having because of drug. It may be because of some other illness which might not be related to the uh, HIV. It may be because of opportunistic infections which may occur, which, uh, which has occurred in the HIV patient or it may be because of treatment failure. So always if the child sends about such signs and symptoms, you have to categorize the signs and symptoms and in this of four categories and you need to be evaluated. Now, monitoring for the adherence, there are different methods for uh, adherence, like uh, you can always do a pill count, you can ask the parents and children regarding the drug intake, and it's better to ask in separate time, right? Once you are asking the child, the father or parent should not be there, and even you can cross check with the uh, parents, you can check with the, uh, like the empty, uh, like uh, your uh, empty pockets of the drugs, and uh, you can ask about the child, like how many drugs, are, how many medicine are you taking in the morning, how many in the afternoon or in maybe the evening. So this is how you can check for the adherence. And if you find out there's an adherence issue, you can provide a separate adherence counseling to a child. So now we take uh, the case scenario and uh, 
you can uh, write down in a chat box this questions uh, answers of this question and we can discuss uh, in the group so a 8 year old girl who is on ald has come for a uh, pill pickup her weight is 22 kg father asked the doctors why her uh, cd4 uh, has fallen and viral report has 10000 copies as per the father her grandmother is giving her pills regularly on inquiring the child revealed that she was taking two and half tablets of pediatric uh, ald 6030 twice in a uh, day so here eight year old child 22 kg who has like uh, cd4 health uh, count has decreased and the viral load has increased and the child is taking 2.5 tablets at twice in a day so now what was happened uh, to this child can anyone can write it down in a chat box and what steps should be taken to avoid this situation so here the weight of a child is uh, 22 kg so look at this chart so uh, the weight of a child is 22 kg the child will have will fall into the 20 to 24.9 of weight band and dose of your uh, azt uh, or uh, with lamivudine with uh, dtb should be a three to a tablet uh, twice in a day morning and evening you can see 20 to 25 kg three tablet in the morning and three tablet in the evening here yeah? So here the issue is that the child has not been prescribed a proper dosage of that particular drug. This may happen because previously the child may have a weight of 18 kg and because of a treatment adherence, child has uh, viral suppression and child is now gaining the weight and because of child has crossed the 20 kg, we need to change the drug from 2.5 uh, uh, tablet BD to the 3 tablet uh, in the BD. Now, what, what can we do it uh, so that this should not happen? So at every visit, always check the body weight of a child, right? So always check the body weight of the child. Then drug needs to be modified that body weight. You should have a drug dosage chart uh, very nearer to you. You can refer to that drug chart and you have to be modified that drug dosage according to the weight of a uh, child. Then caregiver should be a counsel regarding the dose change. Counselors should counsel the child as well as the parents regarding the dose change as well as how many times she has to take the uh, medicines. Even when the child goes to a pharmacist, even that pharmacist also needs to counsel the parent or uh, a family member that this should, they have to take this much amount of drug twice in a day. So adherence counseling we need to be uh, provided them also always, uh, and, uh, as well as that weight increase the dose because of the child has gained the weight that counseling needs to be provided to this child. Now, uh, the adherence issues, they may arise specifically after the two years of age. Now, what happened? Uh, so, one, if the child is taking ART, the quality of life is improved. The overall well-being is improved. So, what the parents and the, uh, the children thought, uh, thought that, now we don't require this drug. Now, we are very fine. Now, our health is, we are in good health. So, we don't require to take these drugs. So, most of the time, they skip these drugs and they feel that now the drugs are not necessary. Second, because of the child may be in adolescent phase or child has now exploring with the other child and seeing that the other child is not, other child are not taking medicine regularly. Then why should I have to take the medicine regularly? And because of the psychological stress or distress, child may skip this uh, dose. And many times what happened, the family also tired of giving medication because this has to be continued for the years. So after the three or four years, when the child is fine, then even the parents also doesn't take care about the child if the child is taking medicine properly or not. So it every we need to provide the adherence counseling. So that we completed the clinical uh, parts. What we have to monitor in the uh, when the child comes to you in the ART center. Now we come to the laboratory monitoring at the uh, follow. So here you can refer this chart. Here in this chart is written that. Hemoglobin or a CBC needs to be monitored at baseline, then at three months and then every six months. If the child has been started on zidovirzin based regimen, then you need to do a CBC at 15 days, one month and two months additionally. The blood urea and LFT and CD4 count 
in a viral load needs to be monitored every six months. So every six months you need to monitor a CBC, a blood urea, uh, your SZPT or LFT, a CD4 counts and viral loads. And every six months when the child comes to you uh, for regular visits, I'll talk about the some there are some changes in CD4 count monitoring afterward that I'll discuss in later in some slides. But every six monthly, this uh, five things you need to be monitored. Uh, you need to additionally monitor the uh, urine analysis if the child uh, uh, urine analysis and a creatinine if the child has been started on pinophobia TDF regime. If the child is on uh, protease inhibitor, additionally, what you have to monitor is a lipid profile and the blood sugar every six monthly. For tenophobia, you need to monitor urine analysis and creatinine every six monthly. If child is on protease, uh, protease inhibitor based uh, regime, then you have to monitor lipid profile and random blood sugar. And a pregnancy testing. It is like for adolescent girls who had missed the period. So you need to counsel first and then if required, then you have to go for the pregnancy testing. It is not for each and every child. If you so like, if feel that child has missed the dose, uh, missed the period, or you might suspect uh, that uh, the pregnancy has occurred in adolescent, then you can go for pregnancy testing. Even after the counsel, it should not be a force to each and every parent or the child that you should go for pregnancy testing. And always screen for tuberculosis at each and every visit. Whatever the child has come for, any problem, any damn problem, you need to be screened for that uh, tuberculosis. Um, so uh, these parameters we need to be uh, monitor in the each and every uh, child. This is uh, this is the chart. What we do it at regular monitoring. If the child comes for any other problem or comes with a problem, or a physician or medical officer feels that I need I need to investigate the child for this particular uh, for such symptoms, then he may order some investigation based on the clinical situations and the condition of a uh, the child. So this is the uh, a framework for regularly monitoring. In between, if the pediatrician or medical officer feels that that the child is to be investigated for some investigation, then he may offer for uh, it. Okay. So as I said, the LFT needs to be uh, done every six monthsly. But you may repeat this three monthly if the child is co-infected with uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis uh, C infection. So in this scenario, instead of six monthly, you have to do it every three monthly. Second, uh, any child who is having a liver impairment or where the SGPT has come for more than five times on the upper limit, then uh, the whole LFT needs to be ordered instead of uh, SGPT. Uh, CD4 count, uh, you, we generally go for CD4 count if children is more than five years. And we have to go for CD4 percentage when the child is less than five years. Uh, the, uh, the, machines, uh, the machines have available on point of care testing and the laboratory machines have a value of CD4 percentage, but usually in uh, many a lab, they don't write CD4 percentage. You always need to be asked for CD4 percentage if the child is less than five years. It's done in every, I think so, in every uh, the center which have laboratory facilities that doing CD4 percentage. So that you need to be do it uh, additionally. So now we'd come to the case scenario two. So I want some uh, response from the uh, participants for this question. It's very easy. So uh, patient Master J has come uh, has taken six months uh, first line ART. And he underwent a viral load testing on 2nd September. So viral load report says, suggests the target not detected. Okay. So what will you explain uh, to the patient and the caregiver? Can anyone say in the chat box? So viral load report says target not detected. So what will you explain to the patient and caregiver? That ART is working and needs to be lifelong. If the ART is working, that's why it is a target not detected. That doesn't, that it doesn't tell you that the AR, the virus has been uh, cleared from the body. It is may still harboring the liver, brain, lymph node, bone. These are the area where the virus goes and they reside. And you may be found a target not detected in the blood. So the, but, uh, the child is still harboring that virus and counsel for 100, first, encourage, first then congratulate them 
that because of your efforts the child have a virus uh, target not detected no viral load has been detected but you need to continue with this 100% treated headmarins so that child have a improved quality of life now what will be the date of the next viral load test so where we uh, when when we do the rapid viral load testing, I'd already explained you in that table that every six, after the first six months you have to do it uh, the next viral load and then every year. So this year the September month we have ordered the viral load. Then we can do it after the six months. Let's say in February end or a March uh, uh, in a March and then every March we can do the viral load of this uh, child. But you may repeat if the if any symptoms worsens or the child is not improving with the treatment. Now, how do we classify this viral load copies? If the viral load copies is more than 1000 copies per ml, it suggests that virus is not suppressed. Then viral replication is still there in the body. That means either child is not adherent to that treatment or ART is not working. So there will be a two, there will be a two scenario, either that uh, child is not adherent to that treatment or that ART is not working. And what we want is less than 1000 copies per ml for a good, uh, it's a good virus suppressed load and ART is working and continue the concurrent regimen. And undetectable means does not have, a, like they don't have a viral copy that can be retreated, but the but you is still harboring that viruses. And generally we want a pregnant lady should be there in under table range so that we can cut down the mother to child transmission of uh, HIV. Now, this is the third case scenario. Here the 12 years old master K, a CLHIV has been ART. He's been on ART since last three years. He says that he says that he takes his pill daily and he never misses the dose of ART. He underwent the load testing on 15 November and viral load uh, test result was 10,000 copies. So here the 10,000 is normal or abnormal? So here the 10,000 copies suggest that the virus is not suppressed. So what actions will be taken by the ART center? So that first of all, we need to provide the adherence counseling. Okay. So we have to counsel them how many medicine they have to take, how often they have to take. Then you cross check is appropriate weight when has been uh, given to the uh, uh, to the child. Also check the, if the medicine has been given to the child, the child is taking medicine regularly or not. And we need to find out where is the, uh, where is the fold and uh, why the child is not taking the medicines. And then we need to solve it out and we have to encourage them to take that uh, medicine. And here you may disclose the status of the child uh, to the child. So generally after the 10 years of age, we usually disclose about the child status of the child. So here we can also discuss uh, the child about their status. It has not disclosed previously. And we need to provide the adherence uh, counseling. And we want that at least 95% of the adherence should be there. Now the same child has been uh, provided three step of counseling and after that repeat viral load is found to be a 5,000 copies. So what will be the next action taken at the ART center? Here we'll also recheck the adherence. Here we'll check the child is taking bruzet uh, like correctly according to the weight of a child. We'll check for the adherence counseling. And even if that, if the adherence is good, then we will refer this child to the SASEP that is the state aids clinical expert panel for the further evaluation of this child, why the child is not having a uh, viral suppressed uh, load. Now what uh, it is immuno, uh, now what is immunovirological dis uh, discordance in HIV? Now what happens once you see the child, uh, the child is, uh, child is having, there's a discrepancy between the plasma viral load and the CD4 uh, level. So once you start the treatment, viral load goes down, but CD4 count, the same time CD4 count also get rising. But what happened in immunovirological discordance, uh, the, there may be a decrease in uh, plasma viral load, but CD4 count may be a suppressed or they may not be rising well. Then what could be the situation? Then child might have recent viral infection. So recent viral infection or any concurrent infection might suppress CD4 counts. So you can repeat after the viral child is recovered. Concurrent infections with hepatitis B or C can also lead to virus suppression. 
the child it may be because of drug induced or it may be because of some other immunosuppressive drugs maybe a steroids or other like uh, anti cancer drugs which might have because of that cd4 count has been uh, low it may be because of recent immunization and child may be co infected with hiv1 and hiv2 this could be a possibility those these are the uh, cases where there will be immunological discordance in any child has been found to be immunological discordance should be reviewed by the sasep by the uh, referral now when to stop for cd4 monitoring so generally we go for uh, uh, cd4 count monitoring every 6 months so when we can stop cd4 monitoring uh, for any patients who is age is more than 5 years and who has cd4 count more than 350 cells and a viral load less than 1000 copies per ml this two things cd4 count and viral load this needs to be done at the same time so any child who is more than 5 years of age whose cd4 count is more than 30 350 cells and viral load less than 1000 here we can stop cd4 monitoring but we can restart the uh, cd4 monitoring if we suspect a clinical failure if this child has changed this or switched the regime like first, from first line to second line or if we suspect a treatment failure then we can order the cd4 count so treating doctor can request cd4 count at any time when it is clinically uh, indicated just a quick summary what we do in follow up that uh, we ask for medical history any new events has occurred we assess for growth and nutrition we do a perform the physical examination we do a developmental uh, screening test we screen for tuberculosis we do a who stg we look for any uh, like we do look for cd4 counts and the viral load uh, we check for adherence we calculate the dose of art uh, also we need to concomitant treatment like uh, if the child is on like let's say the att needs to be started that it needs to be started first and then you need to start the art because of att or we need to might need to change the dosage or the drugs of art so that we need to we need to uh, keep in your mind because we need to aware about the drug to drug interactions and always discuss the findings with the caregiver it may be child may be a fine child doing the well appraise them and uh, allow them to do it uh, regularly if there is any problem you counsel them in your talk with the uh, patients provide the referral as needed and always tell them when they have to come for the uh next with just a uh, recap of what we discussed at the what we do in a follow up clhid when on when he has started on eit now uh, something definitions of stable child of clhiv between 2 to 10 years of age so any child who is more than 2 years to 10 years of age who is satisfying the all of the following criteria will be labeled as a label so he is receiving eit for at least 6 months the viral load is suppressed that means a less than 1000 copies per ml should be in a same regime like what we started like we had started abacavir lenovudine and lopinavir or atomavir so that that same regime without substitution needs to be continued for 3 months should not have any active illness or uh, like a medical condition that requires a further management it has to be more than 95 percentage treatment adherence for last 3 months and weight of the uh, weight of for the age of the child is more than minus 2 hd for that uh, age and sex then we can label this child as a stable child a stable child definition for more than 10 years is same for the, what we use in adults is the child is taking art for 6 months no adverse effects uh, of art that require the regular monitoring suppress viral load and there is no current illness or opportunistic infection or medical uh, condition that requires a management so art for 6 months no adverse effect of art no concurrent illness and suppress viral load this four criteria will tell this child is clinically stable now we are moving to the next section that is adverse effects of arv drugs and its management so it's a drug and drugs has a side effects so and arv drugs also had the side effects and adverse drug reaction what we call this adr generally we classify into the three uh, three types based on the time of initi after times after the initiation of the drug like acute which has occur within a days or a weeks after starting of prt will be labeled as an acute sub acute which occurs after few weeks 
up to the six months will be classified as a subacute. Late that usually occur after the six months of the starting of the drug. We can label based on the severity on mild, moderate, severe, serious, and potentially life threatening. Uh, so here uh, we'll discuss what is mild, moderate, severe, and serious in subsequent slides. So here we can classify ADR based on time of occurrence and based on severity into uh, in the two different classifications as shown in the slide. Now many things uh, any childhood comes with some new events during the after the starting of ART is not always adverse drug reactions. No, always think in your mind, always thought in your mind that. It is. It could be adverse drug reactions, but other things also mimic the adverse drug reaction that you need to be checked. Suppose child has developed jaundice because of hepatitis A infection, and that is nothing to be correlated with the drugs. Like child has developed severe anemia after starting of zidovudine, but at the same time child has developed the malarial infection, so the severe anemia may be because of malaria also. So some of the infections they might, like child has come with the rash, maybe because of measles, and you are attributing this. As a uh, adverse drug reactions, like right? so, common childhood diseases may also present within like a drug reactions in ART uh, patient. It may because it may be iris immune deconstruction inflammatory syndrome because of a strong immunity. Now child is developing certain uh, disease, and it may be because of reaction to uh, some ART ARV drugs. So always look for it may be because of some infections. Which may normally the child may harbor, uh, child may have even if it is uh, HIV negative. It may be because of opportunistic infection that occur because of HIV infection. It may be because of uh, complication of HIV, like HIV encephalopathy may occur because of uh, disease, and it may not be related with the drugs. And it may be because of it may be because of drugs. So always look for that. Okay, uh, is this reaction has occurred because of drug or it is something else in through clinical history. In examination, which will tell you that this is not an adverse drug reaction, and this is something else that needs to be investigated. Here uh, we have a, a different case scenario. So, Master PQR, uh, eight years old, was started on ALD three months back. He was asymptomatic at the time of initiation, and the CD4 count of more than 140. Uh, CD4 count is 145 cells per millimeter of mercury. Now, child has come. Uh, the child is having high grade fever, severe headache, nausea, and vomiting. And child is hospitalized for this company. The investigation says hemoglobin of 11.5 gram per deciliter, CD4 of 325 cells per millimeter of mercury, and CSF source positive of India ink preparation. So, India ink preparation suggests your cryptococcal meningitis. Now, one of the following conditions is the child is like uh, is most likely in this case. Can anyone answer in chat box? It could be a treatment failure, it could be iris, it could be a drug, it was drug reactions, or none of the above. Can anyone can answer in chat box? So this is uh, iris. Why it is iris? Here uh, you can see the difference between the CD4 count when the, any new event is occurring. Uh, uh, any new event is occurring in which your CD4 count is a double from the baseline. You know? So 155 uh, through 325 is the more than the double of the 145. And the child has developed the fever and headache and nausea and projectile vomiting. So this is more likely because of iris. So here is the catch is the CD4 count. Here the CD4 count is also a uh, rising in this uh, scenario. So uh, doc, uh, Dr. Navita, Thanks for your answer. Uh, next case scenario uh, is uh, a six year old child master I is diagnosed is HIV positive. His weight is 27 kg. His hemoglobin was 7.8 gram. And he was started on ART, uh, ALD after the baseline. Paper. On day six of therapy, he developed fever, breathlessness, and generalized rash. So, what is a likely diagnosis in this child? Can anyone can tell in chat box? So child has started Abacavir, Lamudine, and DTG regime. Yes. So it's uh, Abacavir hypersensitive reaction. Uh, 
so it is more likely diagnosed with abacave hypersensitivity uh, reaction now what should be the immediate management first of all we need to stop all the art drugs give symptomatic treatment if required hospitalize the patient okay and does he require art modification can anyone tell in chat box does this child require art modification child has developed the hypersensitivity reaction with abacave so yes the child required uh, drug modifications because abacave is known to cause uh, this uh, c hypersensitivity reaction if it is occur in mild grade then it may be a it may be in the next time it may be a near to death event so we need to uh, change the uh, drug so i am very happy that many people are writing in a chat box uh, giving the answers okay so hypersensitivity reaction to abacave uh, that usually uh, serious and sometime fatal in this been observed in 3 to 5 percentage of children uh, and monitor uh, should it occurs in 3 to 5 percent of the children and monitor this hypersensitivity and this hypersensitivity reaction usually occurs in first 6 weeks and this reaction is much more common in the child with an hla b5701 allele that does not mean that you need to screen this child for this allele before starting of treatment the naco guideline does not tell you that any child has been put on uh, this uh, abacave regimen should be uh, like uh, screen for this hla but this reaction is more commonly seen in the child who is having this uh, allele so what is hypersensitivity reaction to abacave so it is multi organ clinical syndrome characterized by rash and sign sign symptoms of any of two or more than uh, this two following so multi organ uh, dysfunction uh, which characterized by rash in out of this all any two or more than will tell you this abacave hypersensitivity reaction what are they fever constriction syndrome like headache vomiting diarrhea or uh, nausea gi symptoms respiratory signs and symptoms pancreatitis hepatomegaly and abnormal laboratory neurological abnormalities so any child have fitting into this which will tell you this child is having abacave hypersensitivity reactions now we come to the individual side effect of the drug which already discussed i think so in the uh, adult art chapter so here i'll give uh, i'll go very quick and i'll give only the few i only i like only a uh, few important side effects so most common side effect are the nausea vomiting and fever diarrhea and this could be overcome by a few days if the child has developed any like fever or rash or if you feel it's hypersensitive reactions even if it is mild grade you need to stop the drug if you are suspecting hypersensitive reaction even if it is mild grade you need to be stopped because there may be a chances at the next time child will have a more severe reactions and child may have hypotension or may child may succumb in a death also and very rarely you can uh, encounter the adres syndrome that is a drug reaction eosinophilia and systemic symptoms uh, syndrome now zidovudine or uh, we all know that zidovudine have particularly side effect of hematological side effect that is anemia and neutropenia and it is seen when disease is very advanced you know when the cd4 count is less than 200 cells per millimeter of mercury and this require to need, and this side effects develop we need to require to change the uh, drug then maybe in headache balance nausea and vomiting and this may be uh, this may be controlled within few days of the starting of drug and most of the time it is mild grade and less common like lactic acidosis or uh, myopathy or lipodystrophies and zidovudine i'll tell you that zidovudine side effect more more it's seen in uh, like an obese child or like a child who is an overweight and this side effects like myopathy lipodystrophy lactic acidosis usually seen after the two years uh, after the starting of the drug it is more common in the uh, obese child next is the uh, tenofovir the uh, tenofovir we need to be a uh, worry about the two things one is the bone toxicity so it lead to osteomalacia and reduce bone mineral density so any child who is at risk of calcium deficiency let's say rickets or at risk of pathological uh, fractures so these are more prone to develop this child are more prone to develop tenofovir toxicity uh, rarely and very severe toxicity of tenofovir it may be a uh, uh, rise in serum creatinine it may be a glycosuria protein urea phosphate urea calciurea 
and decrease serum phosphate. So any child who has been put on serum uh, tenofovir, we need to monitor the serum phosphate level. So which will tell you about the uh, side effect profile of the uh, child. So renal and bond toxicity is uh, are the two main concern uh, toxicity in tenofovir. And so any child who has been put on tenofovir, we need to be monitor about the growth and we need to monitor for the uh, low phosphate level. Now, protease inhibitor that ritonavir boosted uh, PI. This liponavir boosted uh, ritonavir mainly does a uh, metabolic complications in form of hyperlipidemia, hypercholesterolemia. It may be insulin resistant. And this is more pronounced in girls than the boys. Right? So, uh, uh, lopina, ritonavir boosted lopinavir usually does a metabolic derangement. More common but less severe is diarrhea, headache, asthenia, nausea, vomiting. Asthenia is like feeling of low energy, feeling of weakness. And very rarely it can lead to ECG abnormalities or cardiac conduction defects who has pre-existing cardiac conditions. So risk fact, any child who has been pre-existing cardiac condition, you have, to be, you have to be very sure. We have to monitor this child for ECG abnormality when you are put on a lipinavir or lipinavir boosted it's better not to put uh, so you have to be a uh, very uh, very uh, careful. Uh, second is uh, whenever you want to start uh, liponavir and uh, ritonavir in newborn, never start before the 15 days of life. First thing. Second, never give to the premature infants because a toxicity in premature infants are much more than the uh, full term uh, neonates. Uh, like uh, it can lead to breathy arrhythmias, it can lead to acute renal failure, it can lead to adrenal insufficiency. The first, always don't give to premature infants, even at all, if at all need to be started in full term in, uh, full term infants, neonates, then you should start after the 15 days of life. And this side effects are maybe because of liponavir and etanavir, or it may be because of inactive in ingredient which is there in the uh, as in preservative. That is uh, propylene glycol and ethanol. And because of this preservative, you might come across with the side effects. And liponavir and uh, retinavir also leads to uh, asymptomatic elevation of 17 hydroxy progesterone also. So liponavir and retinavir uh, need to be started after the 15 days in case of full time neonates, even if it is given uh, as an like uh, in a uh, neonate. Now, DTG, now. Now, we have shifted to the DTG regime uh, since last three or four years. Then most common side effect of DTG is insomnia. And this you can do it. Uh, you can prevent this insomnia up, like modification in the drug doses. So instead of giving this drug at the bad time, you can give it in the morning time. So insomnia and the headache is the main side effect. Other is the weight gain and rare, very rare hypersensitivity reaction uh, uh, may occur. And there's a few studies have shown that if this DTG has been given to the pregnant woman, that increases the risk of neural tube defect. But the recent data had shows that when you compare DTG with the other drug, the risk is only 0.15 percentage, which is almost a negligible risk of developing NTD. But you can always counsel the uh, parents that or uh, mother and father that your child, uh, this could be a risk with uh, this drug. So you should be uh, aware about this, but DTG is nowadays we have sufficient studies available. The risk uh, of the neural tube defect is very less with the uh, DTG. So here we have a next case scenario. A 13 year old boy was diagnosed to be HIV positive. He was started on ART after the baseline workup and preparedness counseling. On day six, he had a complaints of the Drowsiness. A 13 year old child has been diagnosed and started on ART, which is tenofovir, limovudine, and DTB uh, based regime. And child is feeling the drowsiness. So, what is the likely diagnosis? Can anyone can tell in chat box? I'd already discussed this in my last slide. After starting TLD, develop the drowsiness. So it is DTG induced drowsiness. What you can do is just modify the drug doses. You can change the time and child may be comfortable. Now, uh, if I have So, uh, 
generally now nowadays we had stopped uh, we are in phase of stopping using of efavirenz so the side effects are the cns toxicity and a convulsions are the main side effect a less common is the hepatotoxicity and in a male child there may be a gynecomastia may be the problem so efavirenz mainly a cns side effects and hepatotoxicity nevirapine so nevirapine has been like blame for rash and every rash is de developed in uh, child is receiving the nevirapine and the nevirapine most of the time is culprit for developing that rash so the skin rash is the mo most common side effect with nevirapine and another is the hepatotoxicity so any child is having hepatitis b and c infection and uh, when there is a high baseline count of cd4 it is at risk of developing a nevirapine toxicity so it is not so like uh, only the nevirapine develop a skin rash ifavirenz and cotramazole also can lead to a skin rash here what we can always do is that you start cpt first and then start some other drugs because cpt is also known to cause a rash so if it is because of cpt it will develop when you started the cpt alone so it will not confuse that it, it will not confuse you that this rash is because of cpt or it may be because of art so you need to start cpt first and then you may start other drugs later on and the other drugs which might be a uh, cause for a skin rash is zirovudine lopinavir adzanavir ritonavir and ttg and other drugs may be a the cause for a uh, drug effects now uh, this i had already discussed whenever the child is come with drug reaction it may be because of a normal childhood infection it may be mucus as an edr it may be an opposite infection it may be an iris or it may be a drug reactions so uh, if any child is presented to you with a life threatening adverse drug reaction is that you need to stop all the arv drugs until the patient stabilize and try to revise regime after the consultation with sasep okay so here is the grading of uh adverse drug reaction that is mild moderate severe and potentially life threatening it is given as in nxr4 of uh, 2021 guideline here is just a snap i had taken it there is a long list of uh, uh the classification in general what we call mild is any symptom which cause a minimal or no inference with usual social and functional activity will be classified as a mild grade any reaction which causing a more than minimal inference with a social and functional activity will be classified as a moderate any symptom which which uh, which make the child to uh, unable to perform the usual social and functional activity will be classified as a severe life threatening is any symptom which causes a problem with basic self care or it may lead to impairment or it may be lead to permanent damage or a disability or death Will be classified as a potentially life-threatening condition. Here we can give one a value of hemoglobin, neutrophil, platelets, and so long. There is a list of NXR four has been given. So based on your lab value, you can classify it as a mild, moderate, severe, and potentially life-threatening. You can go through the NXR and you can uh, decide. So here I have given you an example of drug rash. So for a drug rash grade one, like erythema or pruritus, will be classified as grade one. diffuse maculopapular rash or dry disc formation will be classified as in grade 2 vesiculation or ulceration will be classified as grade 3 mucus membrane involvement sjs toxic epidermal uh, epidermal necrolysis erythema multiforme or exofoliate dermatitis will be classified as in grade 4 now how will you manage this adr for mild and moderate avoid the changing of art because most of the time it is self limiting and it may be improved within next 10 to 15 days so only symptomatic treatment and counseling you have to provide and don't you need to change the drug regime in severe what we do is that we discontinue the suspected drug till the uh, until the condition is resolved and subsequently we can start with the drug but drug would be the another drug from the same class and go to grade 4 discontinue the all the drugs hospitalize the child never restart the drug drug and change the regime after the uh, consultation with the uh, sasep now what is drug substitution and what is drug switch now single drug replacement will be considered as substitution 
like you had started child on zidovudine then uh, lemovudine and uh, uh, let's say uh, dtg based regime in child has developed anemia so here you have changed zidovudine to abacavir so this is substitution a single drug replacement here what we replace is the drug from the same class will be taken as a substitution but in pediatric uh, many time the uh, drug from the same class may not be available so we need to choose from the some other class also when we do it a single drug replacement after all the three will be considered as substitution switch is that you change you are changing the entire regimen that you are changing the all of the three drugs it may be because of a treatment failure or it may be because of some adverse drug reaction this is a difference between substitution and switch in substitution the second drug may be you, the you you can choose a second drug from the same class it may be of second line but it will be considered substitution only it will not be considered as a switch switch is like when you change the all the three drugs to the uh, next class okay so this already we discussed in the uh, next uh, already has been discussed in the next uh, class that tenofovir is advised in child who is more than 10 years and whose weight is more than 30 kg dtg is advised in the child who is more than 6 years and weight is more than 20 kg abacavir zidovudine and lopinavir ritonavir use have no restriction with the age and weight type so you can any dem age and you can any dem weight you can uh, prescribe this uh, drug now substitution so if abacavir say if the child is on abacavir who is develop a drug related toxicity in whose age is more than who age is less than 10 years and hemoglobin is more than 9 you should shift with the zidovudine if abacavir child develop uh, who is more than uh, toxicity who is more than 10 years and more than 30 kg tenofovir if it is less than 10 years and weight less than 30 kg with anemia refer to sasa or pediatric coa right so abicavir with anemia uh, without uh, without anemia zidovudine abicavir abacavir more than 10 years and more than 30 tenofovir uh, if you need to change tenofovir you need to change with abacavir zidovudine patients were developed uh, uh, zidovudine patient was developed uh, anemia if it is less than 10 years and less than 30 kg abacavir and more than 10 years and more than 30 kg tenofovir okay so uh, for lopinavir uh, dtg based regime cannot be given to any child less than 6 years and 20 kg so if you need to change lopinavir ritonavir if the child is more than 6 years and more than 20 kg dtg between 3 to 6 years and between 10 to 20 kg ifavirenz less than 3 years and weight less than 10 kg nebinafen okay uh, for ifavirenz uh, for ifavirenz more than 6 years more than 20 kg dtg and ifavirenz toxicity less than 6 years and less than 20 kg lopinavir nevirapine generally we don't use if at all we are using and if it developing a toxicity less than 6 year less than 20 kg lopinavir uh, lopinavir with ritonavir and more than 6 years and more than 20 kg dtg would be the uh, regime sorry i am going fast because uh, the time has been almost 3 we have been crossed the 3 uh, now this is the last slide i think so so uh, we generally change the drug of the child when the the age of the child is advanced now what is our goal our goal is to reach tenofovir lemovudine and dtg tenofovir would be given to a child who is more than 10 years and 30 kg and dtg based regimen will be chosen when the age of the child is more than 6 years and 30 kg so our goal is to reach tenofovir lemovudine and dtg so any child who is in zdlm zdle or aln regime if it is less than 20 kg where we can not give dtg so and uh, tenofovir here we can use abacavir lemovudine and lapo uh, and pi lapinavir and ritonavir between 10 to 30 kg here we can use dtg but we cannot use uh, your tenofovir so here instead of your teno tl uh, tld we have to make it ald more than 30 kg tld any child who is in ale more than uh, less than 20 kg where we can not use dtg based regime so here we need to be uh, uh, shifted to dtg based regime but child crosses the more than 20 kg 20 to 30 kg uh, 
ALD, uh, ALD and more than 30 kg TLD. Uh, for PI with AL and ZL, ZL uh, more than 30 kg TLD, 20 to 30 kg uh, ALD and less than 20 kg you need to continue with the uh, same drug. So this is the pediatric dosage ARV schedule which is given to you as an annexer. Please refer it to it. Uh, DTG should not to be given in less than six years. You can give it, but we don't have formulation is available. So don't break the tablet and give to the child. Uh, right. So we, even it is written, it is, uh, in the dosage chart, but avoid to give because until and unless you don't have a pediatric formulation is available. So yellow is has been the yellow is pediatric formulation. So if you available pediatric formulation is available with you, you can start DTG in less than. 20 kg also, but don't break the tablet into half and give it to the child because the biology of the drug will be decreased. So just to uh, make sure that don't use CTG of an adult pack of uh, 50 mg into the pediatric, breaking the tablet and giving it to the pieces. It's not at all recommended. Now, what are the key points that we discuss in this uh, lecture that ARV related adverse events may overlap with HIV associated in conditions like organ dysfunction. It may mimic opportunity infection, iris or other common childhood disease. We need to be differentiated AR related adverse events from the other conditions, you know, which might be easily treated, but does not require a drug change. Most of the side effect, ARV related side effects are the self-limiting and result on uh, giving a supportive measurements and counseling. Adverse events are, yes, they are the barrier to adherence, but me, counseling can overcome. Uh, so a good counseling and uh, monitoring of this child, we can achieve uh, very good uh, immunosuppressions in the very good virus suppression in the uh, child. So thank you. I think so. There will be a next uh, session will be on uh, Monday, 13th March between 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, thank you uh, for the patient's hearing. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, any questions from the participants? Please feel free to unmute your mic. Thank you, ma'am. No questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, sir, so much for facilitating this session. Uh, Kiran, sir, can we have and, feedback? Uh, and for? sorry for I took so much time. No, I no problem. No, no problem, sir. This was needed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kiran sir, can we have the feedback form? Uh, all the participants are requested to please fill in the feedback poll. For the next session, participants can refer to chapter number 3.5 of the National Guidelines for HIV Care and Treatment. The topic is ART Treatment Failure in Children. Uh, Arif sir, can you please email me the PPT? You have made some changes. Thank you to all the participants for patient listening. We'll conclude the session now. Thank you.